Hello, in this video I'll be remodeling this house listed on Zillow in The Sims 3. This is a very spacious 4 bed, 2 bath home, initially listed for $225,000. Entering this home through the pink front door, there's a huge living room on the left side with shaggy green carpet. Through the double doors at the back of the living room is the dining room slash kitchen with this sick tropical sunset wallpaper. The kitchen has some really cute cabinets, which are probably original to the house since it was built in 1974. Behind the dining room slash kitchen, there's a massive rec room with access to the backyard, which is also connected via sliding glass door to one of the four bedrooms. There's a small bathroom with a bright green tub and sink on the other side of the house, and then across the hall are two more basic bedrooms with carpet that's seen better days. And finally, at the back of the house is the primary bedroom, which has a sliding glass door to the backyard and an ensuite bathroom with baby blue plumbing fixtures. This home is located in Xenia, Ohio, which is a city about 15 miles east of Dayton with a population of a little over 25,000. I've never been to Xenia, but here are some fun facts about it, courtesy of Wikipedia. Xenia is on Shawnee land and was the approximate birthplace of the Shawnee chief Tecumseh, who was an important figure in the resistance to white settlement in the Northwest Territory in the early 1800s. It also has a history of severe tornado activity and was hit by a particularly devastating F5 tornado in 1974, F5 being the highest rating on the Fujita scale, which measures tornado intensity. Xenia is also the setting of the 1997 Harmony Korean film Gummo, though it's not the actual filming location as Gummo was filmed in Nashville. And that's it for my little Xenia Ohio report. Let's get into the remodel. I'll be keeping the layout mostly the same, but the family that this house is intended for does not need four bedrooms, so my plan is to use part of the rec room and the fourth bedroom for a gym, office, and half bath. Then in the backyard, I'd like to add a pool and a partly covered patio for some shade. The family that will be living in this house is the Platt Steel family, which consists of the Platt family from the Starlight Shores neighborhood, Danielle and her two kids, Alora and Robbie, and then Danielle's fiance, Richter Steele, who is the beefy guy from the Crash Pad household, also in Starlight Shores. The Platt Steele family also has two pets, a cat named Virginia and a kitten named Anne. I'll say more about the family a bit later, but for now, let's move on to the build. So starting off with the entryway and the living room, I'm making some big changes to the style of the house. If this was my own home, I'd probably keep a lot of the 1970s charm of this house, like the front door, the colored plumbing fixtures, the kitchen cabinets, and so on. But for this family, I wanted a bit more of a dramatic aesthetic. So this home is largely done in a Spanish colonial type of style, with a couple little gothic touches here and there. The main features I wanted to incorporate in the house were dark wood floors, white walls, rounded arches, some colorful tile, and really heavy, solid-looking wood furniture. So as you can see here, we've got a little bit of stone floor right inside of the door, but for the most part I've gone with a very dark wood floor for the living room and the hallways. I'm swapping the double doors in the living room with rounded archways and adding white plaster walls throughout the whole space. Um, and I should note that all of those reference photos I showed a second ago are from the same house, which is apparently Diane Keaton's house, though I'm not convinced anyone actually lived in there during the time those particular photos were taken, because it looked pretty empty and devoid of any personal objects, and it also looks like they just shot some random items in there for visual interest, like these empty flower pots around the bed. Uh, I mean, no shade to Diane, of course, I just don't think she was fully moved in yet. But back to the build. I cut into one of the bedroom closets a little bit to make this tiled alcove in the entryway, and then I spent about 20 minutes deciding on little decorative knickknacks to go there, so we'll just skip through most of that. And there's our final arrangement. Not sure what was improved there from the first try, but anyway. I'm uh, moving on to the living room, which is intimidatingly large. This house, like in real life, is about 2,500 square feet of suburban glory, so it's a good fit for The Sims, since most of the neighborhoods in The Sims are like modeled after American suburbs, or at least they seem to be, and um, Sims do need kind of a ridiculous amount of space to function, at least in The Sims 3. I can't speak for Sims 4. That might have improved somewhat. But anyway, it was a bit of a challenge design-wise to make the house feel kind of cozy without breaking up these big open spaces into smaller, reasonably sized rooms. 
Um, so how I end up trying to deal with that in this gigantic living room is to develop two distinct little zones with the orientation of the furniture that I'll end up placing in there. So the side closest to um, the accent wall there with the fireplace and the turquoise tiles um, will be more like the communal space in the room for like having conversation around the fire or watching TV or something, just like the everyday activities that would be associated with more of a like quote unquote family room in houses that are big enough to have both a family room and a living room. Um, and then the side that's closer to the entryway um, will end up having a separate seating area. And I guess that would be where you would like receive guests or something. Um, honestly, it doesn't end up having much of a clear purpose, but it does have a lot of empty space. So if you're going to get into a fight or practice a dance or attempt some gymnastics, that would be the place in the house to do it. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to repurpose the bedroom on this side of the house that's behind that living room wall. So the door I placed by the TV there will be to access what's going to be the office. The office is primarily intended for Danielle because she's an author, so she works from home. But I'll get into all that more later. For right now, I'm furnishing the family room side of the room with a leather couch opposite the TV and a pair of mission-style armchairs facing the fireplace, which are similar to the ones in the reference photos of our friend Diane Keaton's house. As you can see, the color palette for this room, with the exception of the white walls, is pretty dark. All the wood on the furniture is a dark stain, the leather's dark, and the rug is a deep red color. I do end up duplicating that rug for the entry side of the room, just like I did with those two chandeliers, since there isn't a rug large enough to fill this full space. The metal on those chandeliers is black. It's supposed to look like iron. Most of the reference photos of Spanish colonial homes that I looked at had elements of iron, often on the stair railings, the light fixtures, the joints on wooden furniture, and the great silver windows. So anywhere I needed metal in this home, I usually went with iron. To finish off the decor on this side of the room, we've got a bunch of tchotchkes on the mantel and of course a plant in the corner. That's probably my favorite potted plant in the game. It's from Island Paradise, which I actually didn't get until like two years ago, so it still feels new to me despite being a decade old. It came out in 2013. Over here on the entry side of the living room, we've got a rocking chair, a box of pet toys for the kitties, and an end table with a stained glass lamp. Over on the other side, I'm putting together a reading nook with a very heavy looking bookshelf and a leather love seat. And then between the two windows in the front, I'm placing a sound system. This should be a pretty good party home once it's all done. At this point, we're pretty much in the final stretch for this room. I'm just adding some final decor objects and additional lighting. Overall, I think it looks pretty good. I'm more happy with the family room side by the fireplace. Like I've said, it's pretty barren on the entry side of the room, but that might actually be nice for gameplay. Maybe the Sims in this household won't have to go outside of the house if they want to play a guitar or interact with a dog. Up next, I'll be placing the walls for all of the new rooms in the house, the little half bath, the office, and the gym. And I'm starting off with designing the office. In my game, Danielle has pretty much followed the trajectory laid out in her bio, so this office will be her space to write in. Danielle's lifetime wish is professional author, which is to earn 4,000 simoleons per week in royalties, and she also has the hopeless romantic trait. So in my mind, she's mostly a romance author. Coincidentally, if she were to take her fiancé Richter's last name, she would be Danielle Steele, who is an actual romance novelist, um, so that's kind of fun. Anyway, in this room, I'm trying to bring in the gothic touches I mentioned earlier with the arches on the back wall and the dark, ornate mirror and bookcase. I feel like that's Danielle's vibe, not outwardly at all, um, but with her writing and whatnot. Her cats are named after Anne Rice and B.C. Andrews, so she must dig a bit of spookiness with her romance. I didn't lean too heavily into that darker aesthetic though, just to keep the room sort of consistent with the rest of the house. So the curtains, uh, the chairs at the chess table, and the rug are all more rustic and a bit brighter. Uh, Danielle's favorite color is orange, so that is incorporated in all of the textiles. 
even though it's not the most natural fit for this room. Um, I also ended up using a little orange painting over the desk for that same reason, but it really doesn't work in this room looking back at it, um, so I might change it in my actual game. Hindsight is twenty twenty. <laughs> and here I'm just putting together the little half bathroom. Not much to say about it, it's just a 2x2 two two space, so there's no room for anything beyond a toilet and sink, really. I used the same tile as the alcove in the entryway for the walls, and an orangey-red terracotta type of tile for the floor. The metal on the ceiling lights and the shelf over the toilet is also supposed to look like iron. And now I'm over on the other side of the house working on the bedrooms. I've started here with the smallest bedroom, which will be for Robbie. This is what we know about Robbie from his bio. His personality traits are inappropriate, daredevil, and natural-born performer. And his bio states that he, quote, loves to scare his mom with his wild antics and loves pulling pranks and being mischievous in general. So my read on Robbie is that he's very much a jack fan, or whatever the modern day equivalent of that sort of entertainment would be. And his favorite color is black, so I'm giving him a very dark, punky, piratey kind of room. We've got the bedspread with the little skull and crossbones, a very dark, warm gray color that's almost black on the walls, and I do end up putting a little pirate ship in here eventually. Ironically, this room on the Zillow listing did have a little skull and crossbones on the wall with danger written over it, which is fitting for our vibe here, and also very precious. So since the bed in this room is a loft bed, I put a little shelf near the top of the wall by it in lieu of like an end table. And it has an alarm clock and the pirate ship I mentioned. And then we've got a desk under the bed, a wardrobe and stereo in the corner, and a little gaming setup with a beanbag chair and a small TV on the other side of the room. So even though it's the smallest bedroom in the house, I think it pretty much has everything a kid would want. And now I've moved on to the daughter Alora's room. You can see here I already have some junk on the floor that I've been dropping in this room as I go when I'm scrolling through the decor objects for other rooms. There are so many items in the decor category, I usually just pull things out if I think I might need them later, so I don't have to go back and scroll for five minutes and pass things over a million times before I see them. Um, you know how it goes. So as you can kind of start to see here, this is going to be a very pink princessy type of bedroom. Alora's favorite color is pink, and her personality traits are over-emotional, artistic, and ambitious. Her bio states that she does very well in school, loves dressing up, and wants to be a famous pop star when she grows up. And just as a note, I know the Sims Wiki bio shows Alora as a child. She's actually a teen in my game because I have played with this family for a little while. This would be a ridiculously extravagant bedroom for a child. Like, it's got two closets and a vanity. It's going to have a full queen-size bed with a canopy. Um, it's honestly kind of ridiculous for an adult, but... Anyway, this bedroom obviously does not fit into the theme of the rest of the house, and neither does Robbie's. I don't really think it makes sense to impose the design aesthetics of the main parts of the house onto the kids' rooms. Um, those are the adults' decisions, and a kid's room is supposed to be kind of like their escape, and the one place where they might have some agency when it comes to design and layout, even if they're compromising with a sibling that they share a room with. So... Yeah, I'm aware there's nothing that says Spanish colonial about this room. It looks like one of those McMansion-y, pink, girly bedrooms from American teen movies. Um, and those are fun, and that aesthetic made sense for Alora, so that's what we're going with here. I think it probably goes without saying that I did not impose a budget on this build, like I have done in my other Zillow remodel videos. While I do play with this family, and I don't typically like to use cheats for money when I'm playing, I really wanted to do this particular house for them, and given just the square footage of it, there was no way I was going to stay um, within the funding that they had on hand. So, yeah. Danielle's romance novels did not fund this crazy, luxurious bedroom. Okay, so at the foot of the bed here, I have a little, like, hangout spot. Initially, I did try to do those more formal armchairs in this place, but the beanbag and pile of pillows situation feels much more true to a teen room. Unfortunately, those pillows are not usable objects. It would be really cute if your sim could lounge on them, but they are just decorative. Um, and of course, I also have a full-length mirror next to that little hangout section, which is essential for a teen room. 
Um, again, with the mirror, I did start with a more fancy, like, upscale version and ended up going with the cutesy one with the pictures and stickers on the side and the little purse hung over the top because it felt more teen appropriate. It's a really charming little object. I'm pretty sure it's from, like, generations, but I could be wrong. Um, over on that other side of the room, I've got a little end table with a stone top, a lamp, and an alarm clock. It's not my favorite end table in the world, but I had to use something narrow since the curtains behind it are so large. And in the corner of the room, I have an easel to go with those paint supplies that I was saving on the floor for a while. Like I mentioned, Alora has the artistic trait, so it made sense for her to have some creative outlet in her room. And I just put a little rug under the easel so any hypothetical paint splatter would not end up on the big white rug. Not that that's something that actually happens in The Sims. Anyway, Alora has the closest relationship of anyone in the family with the cats, or at least with the kitten. Maybe not the older cat, but uh, I wanted the cats to have a space in her bedroom, so I've got the cat tower, the box with the pet toys, and a little painting of a cat on the wall here. She's a cat person. Eventually, I also put the wall dancer cat toy over here, and I think I get her the cat-shaped stereo as well, which will go by the pillow pile. But I'm going to spare you all of the decorative object tinkering because it is very tedious. So we move forward a bit and oh, there's the little cat stereo and we're done with this room. Now I have moved on to the kids' bathroom. This would be the bathroom shared by Alora and Robbie. The way it was laid out originally with all of the plumbing fixtures on one wall, including the shower head, wouldn't have actually been usable in The Sims, so the first thing I did was center the door and move the sink and toilet to the side opposite the tub. Things that are easy to do in The Sims, but not in real life. Then I added this variegated green tile on the floors and the walls around the shower, and now I'm adding white plaster wall above the half tile wall in the rest of the room. As I've mentioned, I don't have a budget for this remodel, so I swapped out the toilet for a much nicer one, just because I could. And I added a little bit of art on the wall there, and I'm recoloring the cabinet and the countertop for the sink. As much as I love the bright green sink and tub that came with the house personally, they don't make sense with the overall design style for the home, so I had to let them go and replace them with boring white porcelain plumbing fixtures. I think I have a colorful tub and or shower in the ensuite bathroom though, so that's something to look forward to later. But anyway, finishing up this bathroom, we've got some dark red towels over the toilet and a matching bath mat and um, the replacement for the green sink, which it looks like I actually did color to match the counter, so it's not plain white at least. Speaking of features I would have kept if this was my own home, I've moved on to the kitchen slash dining room and removed all of the cabinets, which in real life were those cute little 1970s cabinets with the center knobs. There wasn't a direct equivalent to those in The Sims, but either way, what I did use instead didn't fit the aesthetic for this home either, and I wanted to reorient the kitchen layout anyway, so all of the cabinets and counters were taken out first. Then I added a second archway entry into the kitchen, just because it looks cool, but it does have the added benefit of improving traffic patterns for Sims, so that's neat. On the walls, I'm going with a white plaster and dark blue tile with little multicolored accent tiles, and the floors are again a terracotta sort of tile similar to the half bathroom, but I don't think these exact floors are what I end up going with, we'll find out. I struggled a lot with this room and changed things many times, partially because I didn't have a clear image in mind for it and I wasn't looking at any reference photos. This was the photo I found of the kitchen from Diane's home. And don't tell her I said this, but I don't love it. Uh, I should also note that when I went to look for that photo of the kitchen, I saw that the house I've been referencing was actually her house from like 20 years ago, and I don't think she even lives there anymore, so she really can't be held responsible for that kitchen. Or for those empty flower pots by the bed. A lot was going on in the early 2000s. I still had glow-in-the-dark stars on my ceiling at that point, so I'm in no position to critique anyone's interior design taste back then. All that to say, don't get too attached to anything you're seeing right now because I do end up changing quite a bit of it by the end. But at this point, I've got the blue tile from the walls also on the countertops, and I've added an island in the center of the kitchen, which will get some stools eventually. Um, eventually, I'll also be using that blue tile on the full wall with the fridge and the stove. 
but I don't keep it on the countertops. I actually go with um, the stone countertop that I land on for the island in just a minute right there. Um, anyway, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit to spare you some of this nonsense. Okay, so at this point, I've changed the countertops, added the dishes for the cats on the other side of the room, and placed a long dining table, chairs, and some artwork. And I've got something at least close to the final tile floors, if not the final floors, that will be used for both this room and for the gigantic rec room behind it. Over on the kitchen side, you can see I've got the blue tile on that full wall behind the stove. All that's left for the kitchen is just finishing touches, some decorative items like cookie jars and paper towels, and the small appliances like a microwave and food processor. And at this point, I have moved on to the big ol' rec room in the back of the house. Alright, so I've got the terracotta floors down in this big beautiful rec room. Most people in Ohio have got it made. This house would be at least a million dollars in the Bay Area, and probably quite a bit more. I've got to get out of here. But I digress. The main goal for this room is for it to have all of the things I would think of as the mainstays for a stereotypical rec room. So like a pool table, leather couches, a stereo system, a wet bar, um, but all still within the design style of the rest of the home. Like I said before, this is uh, going to be a good party home. I started off with switching out or recoloring all of the windows and doors, and I added a second door to the backyard. Originally, there was another door to the side yard on the left side, right by the sliding glass door to the fourth bedroom, which was a pretty odd choice, but I cut into that part of the room to make space for what will be the gym, so that door is no longer, and the only entry to the gym will be through the rec room. I've got some big iron chandeliers on either side of the room, and the pool table is right in the center of the largest section, with a big rug underneath that kind of reminds me of hotel ballroom carpet. I was a competitive dancer as a kid, so I've spent a lot of time rolling around on carpet like that at conventions. If you know, you know. We've got the little leather couch seating area in the corner, and now I'm placing a bar and a dartboard, so this room would basically be like having a whole bar in your own home, just no bartender. To fit with the theme of the rest of the house, I'm changing the top of the bar to a variegated blue tile. I just had to move it outside for a second to get the color right because there's a lot of glare from the chandelier. Um, and I do make it a little bit darker than that eventually because it's just very bright in the room. Um, and then once I added the stools for the bar and recolored them, I did a bunch of tinkering with placement of the bar and decorative objects. So I'll go ahead and move us forward a little bit so we don't have to watch all of that. And there we have it. There's the final orientation of the bar. I put a nice liquor cabinet behind it, and the walls are now a light yellow color. And with that, we've moved on to the next room, which is the primary bedroom. So for this bedroom, I did stray a bit from the Spanish colonial look again and went for something a little more contemporary with a very warm, rich color palette. So, not doing the stark white walls in here. Instead, I did one accent wall there with a patterned wallpaper that's like a faded green and brownish pink. And then I've got a deep mustard yellow or rusty orange kind of color on the rest of the walls. Like I mentioned, Danielle's favorite color is orange, so I did just want to bring that into the house some more. I'll also be pulling in more of the green from the wallpaper with the final rug and some curtains, but I'll be keeping the rest of the textiles light and neutral to balance out all the rich color. I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but both the before and after version of this house are available for download on The Sims 3 Exchange, and I'll have links to those in the description. If you want to do your own remodel of the before version, I'd be really interested to see it, so feel free to reach out and share. I'm not a great Sims builder, and I definitely do not have any interior design talent in real life, so it would be really cool to see what other people could envision for these homes. Anyway, at this point I'm just placing the standard bedroom objects in tables, lamps, an alarm clock, reading material, etc. I also put a little bench at the end of the bed, which would hypothetically be where you'd take your shoes off or throw your coat. You know, human things that don't actually happen in The Sims. I know this stacking furniture thing with the bed and the bench is a little obnoxious. Carolyn Winkler calls this out in her video, Home Decor Trends I'm Furious About. And I do agree with her, um, and it's a fun video with good points, but in my defense, 
This room is obnoxiously large, so I have more than enough space to make a furniture train like this, and at least it's not a fully upholstered love seat. Speaking of which, I do have a fully upholstered love seat there in the corner because, again, this house is massive, this room is massive, so couch in the bedroom, why not? With the bookshelf next to it, that could be a nice little reading nook or just a place to sit while you creepily stare at your partner sleeping from across the room. Whatever works. And with a decorative shelf on the wall and a guitar in the corner, we are done with this room and next up is the ensuite bathroom. So as you probably noticed, there's no wardrobe in the primary bedroom. It's in the walk-in closet on the right that you enter through the bathroom. I did cut into that closet a bit so there could be a double sink in the center, but there's still enough room for that wardrobe to be usable. I really missed the closets in The Sims 2 that were actual usable objects when I'm doing these Zillow remodels. Since these builds are based on real homes, they pretty much all have those sliding door closets, um, which of course you can replicate with a double door and a clothes rack in The Sims 3, but that's purely decorative. You still need a wardrobe to change clothes. It's just a weird oversight for The Sims 3, especially given that the customization you can do with the color wheel allows for the most accurate replications of real homes when compared to other Sims games. I think they brought closets back in one of The Sims 4 expansion packs, but that's not quite enough reason for me to play that game. Anyway, again, I went with a variegated tile in here, this time in purple. I replaced the shower-tub combo with a separate shower and tub, because again, no budget, so why not? and I'll be recoloring that tub to a purple that matches the tile as a little nod to the colorful sink and tub that were originally in this bathroom. All right, so we've got our sinks placed, two sinks, very luxurious, a couple little decor items, and um, there's the recolor of the tub there. And with that, we are moving on to our next room, the gym. Home gym seemed pretty essential for Richter Steele. He's got the athletic trait and the perfect mind, perfect body lifetime wish, which is to max the athletic and logic skills. His bio also states that he is a health nut who loves the beach and tanning and lifting weights on the boardwalk. He's very much a beachkin. I liked him as a match for Danielle because she writes romance novels, and with his excessive muscle mass, he looks like he'd be on the cover of one, so... Kind of a fairy tale pairing there. And here's our gym so far. It's got gym stuff. I went with an aqua color for the drapes and the yoga mat, because beach. And Richter does strike me as someone who is secure enough in his masculinity to appreciate yoga. Not that Sims do yoga, but anyway. We've got a little dresser with a stereo on top in the corner by the door, and some full-length mirrors on this other side, because you are supposed to stare at yourself when you lift things. I've been to a gym, I've seen it. Uh, and that's it for the interior, so now we have moved on to the backyard. I did not include the footage of me making this pool because I was trying to get a cool shape with the rounded corners tools, and it just kept looking phallic, so no rounding. Obviously, I had to level this part of the lot in order to place the pool, and it left a silly looking slope to the very edge of the lot, so I'm just trying to disguise that a little bit with these big rocks and bushes. Um, and at this point, we are nearing the end of the video. There's more work to do on the back and front yards, and there will be a before and after montage at the very end, uh, which is kind of rewarding. Uh, just fast forward to that if you're getting bored. But anyway, if you are still here, I know I mentioned in my last video that I'd post another in a week or two, and that was like months ago. And I know it doesn't matter, nobody watches these, but I do have the urge to explain myself just a little bit. Basically, I was just feeling very Zillow avoidant for a bit. Uh, what happened was my dog had to have emergency surgery for a collapsed lung. He's okay now, but he was in the hospital for a while, and I ended up with an $18,000 vet bill, which luckily I had enough in savings to cover because I'd been saving for the last few years in hopes of one day having enough for a down payment on a home. But that did kind of wipe me out, so I have given up on that dream for now, and scrolling through Zillow just felt like a sick joke for a minute. I'm over it now, and I know I'm very lucky to even be able to afford rent given how brutal it is out there. This is maybe the wrong way to phrase this, but honestly, I do take some comfort in knowing that most people who are looking to buy a home for the first time, at least in the US, are not able to do so because the discrepancy between growth in housing costs versus growth in median wages, unless you're a CEO. Um, for most, the only way to afford a home is to have one to sell, so 
there's some solidarity to be found there. At least, you know, we're not failing as individuals, just operating within the reality of unchecked capitalism and financialization of housing, which has basically blocked entry to the market for any would-be first-time homebuyers. So if that's you as well, I'm sorry, I see you, but hey, we've got plenty of real estate in The Sims. So back to that, I'm recoloring the exterior now. There's brown brick on the first level, which is just the garage, nothing to see there, and an off-white plaster on the main level. In the backyard, I'm building up the covered patio area. This will be half shaded by the roof, and then a wood awning type of thing will extend out to this back wall that I've placed with the stone arches. It's a little bit over the top, and it's kind of starting to look like a resort, but as mentioned, I was taking inspiration from photos of a celebrity's house in Bel Air, so that's not unexpected. Um, and there is the construction of the little wood thing I was talking about. I do really like how it casts like a cool little grid-like shadow on the ground in the game. It's a nice detail. I think it shows up later. There you can kind of see it, um, and it also shows up in the before and after montage. But anyway, just placing some trees around the pool, and after that I'll be moving on to the front yard. Um, I'm going to recolor this driveway to a nice red brick, um, which just matches the aesthetic of the home a little bit better, and I'm going to switch out the garage doors. Up to this point, I've mostly been using plants that might actually make some sense in Ohio, where this actual home is placed, uh, but from here out, I'm bringing in a lot more tropical plants from The Sims 3 Island Paradise pack because they look cool. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward a bit through all of the landscape tinkering because um, it's very tedious. And all right, so on the patio here, I'll be placing a little cooking station, a table and chairs, and some little love seats and a fire pit. Uh, so this family will have a very comprehensive outdoor hangout spot here. As mentioned, this is a very solid party home. Uh, I'll just plug one last time that both the before and after of this house are available on The Sims 3 Exchange, linked in the description. And also, if you come across any homes on Zillow that you would like to see remodeled in The Sims 3, feel free to send them my way, as long as the pictures of the house are mostly of it unfurnished or only with staging furniture. I just don't want to show people's stuff. I'll probably be doing something a little bit different with my next video, but still within The Sims. Not going to make any promises on when that will show up, but one day. I do still plan to make these Zillow videos from time to time because they are pretty fun. Just want to try something different now that I sort of have the very bare bones basics of video editing down. But that's pretty much it, so thank you so much for watching. Diane Keaton, I hope you're not too mad at me. I liked the rest of the house, I just thought the kitchen was a little silly. Uh, Alright, here comes the before and after.